very good poem and a very good explanation. Thank you. In your, in your broad list of accomplishments in life, including being a TV star on Ghost Hunters International, traveling the world, earning degrees in English and culinary arts, you published two books, and you co-host a very successful internet radio show called Dead Serious. What else is on your list of ambitious goals? Um, I just, I, I want to investigate. You know, there, there's thousands of groups out there, and I always tell everybody, uh, I've been into the paranormal for a while, I've been investigating for a while, and ghost hunters, and I could say this not just because I'm on the show, but it is the truth, but the original ghost hunters was very instrumental in bringing the field to the forefront because you had a lot of people that were interested in the paranormal, interested in ghost hunting, and before ghost shows here and there, but they never really connected. And this, by this show coming out and connecting and being such a runaway hit that it has become, it it almost validated people. It it almost validated the field. So it was giving, it was you know, letting people move on without feeling ostracized and and uh, outcasted because of what they believed in. But then again, the negative side is that groups have been crawling out of the woodworks. There's literally tens of thousands of groups now that Ghost Hunters started, that were not there before. Uh, a lot of people watch Jason and Grant or Barry and Chris and all of us on Wednesday and Thursday morning, excuse me, but they're like half-assing it and they're making their own group and they, there's no heart behind it. There's no anything. They're in it for the wrong reason. They're in it for any kind of fame, 15 minutes of fleeting fame, rather than passion for it. So my hope is that when this whole field dies down, and it will, everything runs its course, that all the groups that are the fly-by-night groups will disappear and all the ones that are passionate about it will continue to, to flourish uh, underground in the shadows where they belong and, and really help people with uh, paranormal and unexplained phenomenon that's, pre that's presented to them. That's why everybody should have gotten into the field to begin with. So that's pretty important to say. Um, I'm certainly not from a family of money and I wouldn't be able to go travel all over the world and, and use all this expensive equipment and work with the top grade investigators that we have, um, uh, you know, any, any normal day, I would not be able to do that. This show has afforded me the opportunity to go ahead and do that. And the plus is that I'm on the show and the show is front runner of all the paranormal shows out there, which is awesome. Way to go, everybody. GH. Thank you. GHI. <laughs> but, um, and that's a big thing. That's really important to us. Obviously, when this when this goes away, I, I would still like to. I have a very big, uh, as I was saying, a very big passion for horror films. So I landed one role in a movie, and I did get approved to do it. It's a Night of the Living Dead remake, which I'm very excited because that's one of my favorite all time horror movies. And it's not a cameo role; it's a speaking role. I'm a deputy. I have quite a bit of dialogue, quite a bit of scenes. So I'm very excited. And there might be a few other roles like that down the line that I'm currently in discussion about. So hopefully this all um, takes off for me and uh, I can really get into my passion um, of horror movies and, and uh, the whole genre. Uh, I, I am started a third book. I'm about 60 pages into it. This is going to be a, a massive book, probably 350, 400 pages of uh, the 100 uh, most uh, um, overlooked fantastic horror films out there. That either have fallen out of the public eye for, for you know, either just the passage of time or for the fact that they were marketed badly or they came out when another big movie came out and they were just they just disappeared. I'm basically trying to uh, reinstill some interest into these films and, and try to get people to check them out because there's a lot of great movies out there that uh, are put a lot of today's movies which I love they put them to shame. So. Uh, it's, it's going to be a really important book for me. I'm going to be very excited about that one. And it's going to be totally different. It's going to be more review-based and more, um, you know, uh, literary in terms of its content rather than prose and, and the poetry that I've been doing. I'm sure that'll be very popular. There's a big following for people in horror movies and not just teenagers, but also adults. That's a very popular subgenre of society. Oh yeah, you can't see, but my uh, the, the walls in back of me—they're all covered with movies, um, and there's just a ton, and they're all horror movies. There's no—I have a little like this amount of comedies and everything else, but tons of horror movies, and uh, 
I just love them. That's how I want to spend my time, and that's how I am spending my time. So, what what else can you tell your fans about your new book coming out next week, which is called Silent Morning? And where can they purchase it? Uh, it's going to be Lulu.com, where you got the uh, the first book from as well. I will have links dropped all over the place uh, on the twentieth. But it's a very very heartfelt book. Uh, I sent. I had a proof copy because you always have to get a proof copy to make sure everything's good to my mom. I read it first, but I sent it to my mom and she, uh, absolutely. And she's, she's a, she's a harsh critic. She doesn't just, I don't do everything fantastic in her eyes. You know, if there's something that's up, she'll tell me. And she read this and she said that she thought it was so much better than the original and she liked the original a lot, but she was very proud of it. She said it was really, really good. I'm excited about it because I think it's deeper. I think there's more meaning behind it. And I split this one up. If the, you know, with the first book, most of it was about overseas travel. And then there were a handful of poems at the end about local stuff that I've been through with Alpha, my team, team and everything. It's pretty much half traveling and just half daily life observances. And I think that that works very well. I think it's going to be received very well. Um, I'm very, very proud of it. I'm, I'm looking forward to people's feedback because uh, it's, it's very heartfelt when I wrote it. Other than horror movies, how do you like to unwind with your free time? Oh, pretty much karaoke is uh, <laughs> my number one thing. I love karaoke. I'll throw them on YouTube to, to bother everybody. And then um, Knight Rider, I'm a huge Knight Rider fan. So I pretty much immerse myself watching Knight Rider all the time. And uh, I'm a huge fan of the Insane Clown Posse and Psychopathic Records and all their music. Um, and those are pretty much my main... Things I love music, TV, movies, karaoke. I like bowling. Um, <laughs> not not that deep, but uh, I'm happy with what I do. So. Well, on behalf of your Ghost Hunters International fans, we thank you for sitting down and, and explaining your book, and it's just absolutely wonderful. Thank you. This is this big pleasure and a, a huge opportunity to um, just thank everybody and. and Thank the fan. I have a lot of fans that I didn't expect at all. I'm very grateful for, and uh, GHI is grateful for everybody. GH is grateful for everybody, and you guys rock. Just keep keep supporting us, and we'll keep trying to do the absolute best programs for you guys because we're going to some awesome locations, and the new season starts February 22nd, and we're all saying this is going to be an amazing season. We're pretty much going to redefine the ghost hunting world with this season. Uh, these episodes are, are incredible. Wonderful. We look very forward to it. And that concludes today's interview with Scott Tepperman of Ghost Hunters International on his book Chasing Winter and his upcoming projects, which we will cover next time. Do you have any other closing remarks? Um, yeah, I just have to rub it in. Uh, go Patriots. Take, no! it Take it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> they did have a good year this year. <laughs> they have a good year every year. They're so yeah. awesome. Oh.